Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D Game Programming Tutorial Series. Today, we're going to start on our interaction system, which basically is a physics system, just with a couple minor tweaks and additions that aren't typically part of a physics engine. So, let's go ahead and get into it. It shouldn't be too terrible, but it's still going to take a couple videos. So, yeah, let's do it. So, to start out, what exactly is an interaction system, and how does that differ from a traditional physics engine? Well, to start off with, think of it like just a traditional physics system, because it's very similar. So, we'll start off by just looking at entities that have both a collider component and a transform component. Why do we care about those entities? Because those are the ones that could potentially have something physics-y happening just sort of intuitively. That's why we care about these particular entities. And it makes sense. If you just have a transform component, well, you have no colliders. You can't interact with anything. If you just have a collider, well, you don't have any position in the world, so you can't really interact with anything. So it really needs to have both. And anything that does have both will go into our interaction world. And that's why we have the ECS listener. So we can look at any time an entity is added with a collider component and a transform component, our interaction world knows, well, okay, this is a new entity that I'm going to have to care about somehow. Makes sense. And again, just think of interaction world as a physics world for right now, because that's... they're very similar. So what happens in an inter interaction world? What does it do once it knows about all its entities? Well, in principle, it has one core function. It will look at every entity in the world, and it will find if they're intersecting. Because our definition is, if the colliders are intersecting, they interact. That looks something like this. So let's say we have two box colliders. Maybe these are oddly shaped balls or projectiles. If they intersect like this, hey, maybe they just collided with one another. And so then I'd resolve the collision and make them bounce off each other or something like that. So that's the general idea. But... Well, yeah, if they're intersecting, they're considered to interact. So it's a little bit more general than just the traditional physics interpretation. So what exactly does it mean to interact? What is an interaction in this system? An interaction really is just sort of an if-then rule. We use if-then rules to match what types of entities have intersected and what's the appropriate interaction between them. So for example, if a ball intersects a wall, then we could bounce. That's sort of a traditional physics-y type of interaction, where, yeah, we have ball objects. You might notice, okay, this object's a ball. This is a wall it's just bounced off of. So, or hit, rather, it's intersecting a wall. So it should have bounced off this wall at some point. Now it's going to go off here somewhere, maybe. I don't know. But again, more general. It can be any type of object intersecting any other type and then some appropriate interaction. And we're just creating general rules for every type of intersection like that. So if a player intersects a cutscene trigger volume, then we start can start a cutscene. That's another example. Nothing remotely physics related about that. That's just having cutscenes in your game, but this handles it gracefully because it can handle this sort of thing. It handles intersection. It handles interactions between objects. And another example. We might have hit scan rays spawned in because the player's shooting a gun. We need to know if that gun hits anything. So if hit scan rays intersect enemies, then the enemy dies. Again, these are just general if then rules that are all part of it. And yeah, that's the basic idea here. And we could just have a list of rules like this for every type of interaction we care about in our game world. And then the interaction world just goes through once and handles all the interactions correctly very straightforward. That's what we're after, and that's what makes this different from a physics engine. It's more general. It can handle any type of interaction, not just the ones that are strictly physical. And we don't have to special case these in every, well, like the player class, for example, or the enemy class. All the rules handle it for us. And that's actually good because that makes us a data-driven approach. We can add the rules say, in a, a separate text file, and we can program the interactions just in that file and load them in at runtime, and, oh, hey, this is how the world interacts. Go. 
Boom. It's very nice. There's a lot of cool things just by having everything handled in one place. So how do we represent this, though? That's the real question. And our representation is going to be pretty simple. We'll have a list of the required components to identify the interactor. So maybe a ball component will represent the ball. For instance, I don't know. The required components to be an interactee. So maybe have a wall component, or maybe it'll just bounce off of anything with a collider, which would be kind of crazy, especially if it hits sort of invisible things, but you know. And lastly, well, a virtual function to define what this interaction is. What does it mean to bounce? How does that happen? So that's the general idea behind this interaction system. Hopefully that makes some sense to you, and that's what we're going to be implementing. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create bounding volumes for all of our objects. And it's actually not that difficult. If you look in math, we already have classes for a lot of bounding volumes. We have the bounding box in the AABB class. We have spheres in the sphere class. We also have planes in the plane class. But right now, we're only going to care about one thing. In utilcomponents.h, we're going to create a component that I'm going to call collider component. And this is going to have one thing only, an AABB. So we're only going to have bounding boxes right now. And the reason is, really, once we get into more advanced colliders than that, we're pretty much just going to want to create a general collision, a collider system for generic arbitrary meshes. And I'd rather not get into that immediately. We don't need to do it immediately. We can do some awesome games with just AABB colliders. This is the only sort of collision that the Dare engine supports, and that's done a couple of interesting things. So, yeah, th this is going to be plenty fine to start out with. Next up, we have our interaction world. So, I'm going to create a new file just in the source folder itself, no subfolder yet. Interaction world.hpp. And we're going to grab more once, as always. And yeah, we're just going to create the class. It's going to be a pretty straightforward class. So public and private. There we go. Now, this is going to need to be a couple of things. Firstly, we're going to need to take advantage of our new ECS listener. So I'm going to include ECS slash ECS dot HPP. And we're going to make this inherit from ECS listener because that's what it is. It's an ECS listener, which also means we're going to need all these virtual functions, and we're going to need to do something with them. So I'm going to go ahead and just set those up right here for now. And we're also going to want a constructor for this. This is going to be kind of like we tend to do in systems. So I'm actually going to just borrow from one of my systems. I suppose I'll pick renderable mesh. Doesn't especially matter. Yeah, we want a constructor very similar to this. Except instead of adding component type, we're going to be adding component IDs. So there you go. And specifically, we're going to be add. Well, actually, before I do that, I need to include them. So under gamecs slash utocomponents.hpp, what we need here is we need the transform component and the collider component. Yeah. And also we need the correct names. Interaction World Constructor doesn't take in any parameters. Inherits from ECS Listener. There you go. And I think that's what we need to set up. So okay, cool. So now we should only be notified about entities that match what we need now. So what we're going to do now is we need the data. We, we should be being fed the correct entities and component notifications, but again, we need the correct data structure for it. So the data structure that I'm going to go with is just a simple array. We're going to have an array of entity handle that, yeah, I'm going to call entities. Simple as that. And this is going to work fine when we're making a new entity or adding a component, because that'll just add new entity to the end of the array. Removing an entity or removing a component could be a little more problematic at first glance because that's a linear operation. It would require going through 
every single entity in the list to completely remove it. That's probably not good to happen every single time you remove an entity or remove a component. But thankfully, there's a little bit of a way we can get around that. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But now, let's just go ahead and flesh out our basic implementation of onMakeEntity and onRemoveEntity. onMakeEntity, dead simple. We know by default it has both of these components just by virtue of how we implemented ECS Listener. So, we can simply say entities push back handle. Done. So if a new entity is created that matches these components, it'll be in our array. On add component is a little bit trickier, but the same general principle applies. What we want to do is we want to check if ID is transform component ID. And what we want to do with this is if it is a transform component ID, we want to know, okay, does this entity already have a collider on it? If it does have a collider, then okay, now this is a valid entity, now it should be added to the entities list. So we're going to take advantage of our ECS. We're going to use get component. Where is it? Down here, right here. We're going to use get component. What we're going to do is say if, oh right, we don't have access to the ECS. Okay. All right. So the way we're going to solve this is we're just going to take in the ECS reference ECS. That's going to be a parameter, ECS in. And that'll be a private variable here, ECS reference ECS. So we have the ECS listener, and ECS becomes ECS in in the constructor. There we go. We're done. And now what we can do is say ECS get component. And what we want to know about is the collider component. And we want to know if this is not null pointer. If this is not a null pointer, then we know, OK, this definitely has both components now. Now it can be added to the entities array. So entities.pushbackhandle. And we're going to want to do the same sort of check again, except if it's whether the components reverse. So if collider component and if transform component. And there we go. Now we have, yeah, now we have on add component implemented. And we're just left with on remove entity and on remove component. Here's the thing. Ultimately, we are going to need to iterate through this entire entities array anyways. When? Well, this happens when we go through every enter entity to find the intersections. So rather than trying to remove every component immediately, we're going to do this a little bit more intelligently. We're going to have an array of entity handle called entities to remove. And we're going to do the same sort of logic for remove entity remove component, except we're just going to straight up add it to the list of entities to remove. And yeah, so anytime we're about to update this, anytime we're about to find if all the entities are intersecting, we're just going to remove all the entities to remove first. And this will be a little bit better because we only have to go through the array once. That'll be a little bit better for cache performance. And presumably the to remove list will be much smaller than the entities list most of the time. So this should be fairly okay. For the virtual function, same logic as add component except now we're adding it to the to removes list. And we also need to change the logic just slightly. So basically, actually, I think we can even get this one further because if we're removing either of those components, then it's no longer valid. So if we remove either of these, if that or ID equals collider component ID, yeah, then just remove. So that's the logic for move component. If we have either of the needed components, then we move it. So there you go. Now, one last thing is I would prefer not to keep all these methods in the header. So just a very simple thing. I'm going to create interaction world.cpp. And I'm just going to copy all these functions. Actually, I can close this. There you go. 
go and blow it up. Let's include interaction world.hpp and okay. I guess my copy and paste did not work for some reason. That's interesting. So let's try again. Let's copy and paste. There we go. Okay. So awesome. Now we just need to add the class name in front of it. So interaction world on make entity. Perfect. And change the header methods, which is going to be dead simple because we can literally copy and paste directly from here. There you go. And that makes the header just a little bit nicer. So that's great. We now have our basic interaction world. And we have a couple of minor bug fixes in interactionworld.cpp. Namely, we don't need virtual here. So get rid of it. It's only needed in the header file. When we use git component here, we forgot to pass in a handle as a parameter. So there you go. Make sure to call as a function and have handle in the parameter as a parameter. And lastly, in ecs.hpp, I made a slight mistake defining these because I don't actually have a definition for these in the header. So these should actually be just like an empty function. There you go. Now that should fix all of the issues here. And if you build, you should be able to build without any issue and be able to run just like we've done every video up till now. But that leaves a few questions. Namely, we still have all the entities, we're not handling entities to remove, and we still don't do the primary function, finding all the intersections. How could we find all the intersections between these entities? Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget, there's an awesome Benny Discord you can be a part of, and you can get early access to videos on Patreon. A very special thank you to the patrons listed in the video description for making these videos possible. Thank you very much. I will see all of you in the next video.